Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield Chien. I am coming to you live from the campus of Walpole High School in Walpole, Massachusetts. Here to bring you live coverage of today's high school varsity field hockey contest between the hosting defending state champion Walpole High Timberwolves and the visiting Brookline High Warriors. Well, today promises to be a big test for the Warriors coming in. The Warriors with a 2-2 two two record so far this season. Going up against the undefeated defending state champs. The Timberwolves, a uh, historic powerhouse in Massachusetts high school field hockey. Twice they were the Division I state runners-up in 2021 and 2022, losing both times to Andover. And then last year the Timberwolves got their sweet satisfaction dethroning Andover and claiming their state championship. And now they're trying to march it back. Brookline, meanwhile, trying to march their way up the mountain and build a top flight program that can hang with teams like Walpole. You know, and that's still, uh, you know, that's a, that's a long road for any program to travel. Brookline has been making some steady progress. Last year, they went 9-7-2, and two, ranked 25th in Division I, lost in the round of 32. So they're making their way up the rankings. And on paper, going up against easily one of, if not the best field hockey team in the state in Walpole, the odds of Brookline winning are quite long, but if nothing else, like for just about any other field hockey team in the state, going up against a team like Walpole can serve as a good litmus test of where your program is and what you still need to work on. So I think there's still going to be a lot of value in watching today's game and seeing how the Warriors stack up against the champs. Now this game is slated for a 4.30 start time, but we might be starting a few minutes late. Just because uh, I think Brookline hit some traffic on, uh, on the way out here. So we'll see. But in the meantime, for anyone uh, tuning in, if you end up enjoying this live stream, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my upcoming live streams. And then if there's anything anyone would like to say, I encourage you to say it uh, either in the live chat here on YouTube or to uh, send me an email if you're not comfortable with uh, YouTube's live chat system. And then of course, uh, I encourage you to go down to the description section down below, check out some helpful links to uh, some nice local community organizations among them is our sponsor for today, as this broadcast is brought to you in part by Esh Dental, located right in Coolidge Corner. Book your next dental appointment with local dentist and BHS sports parent, Dr. Brandon Esh, for the non-corporate personalized dentistry our community deserves. Call 617-566-0103 or go online to eshdental.com to find out more and book your appointment. Once again, that's 617-566-0103, or go online to EASHDENTAL.com. And you can find that information down in the description section down below. You can also find some other helpful links, uh, including a link to uh, the uh, official Venmo account for the Friends of BHS Field Hockey Booster Club. Now, they just established that uh, this year. Um, 
So if you see the link, you'll see it's not like named Friends of BHS Field Hockey, but it is the Venmo account that's connected to them. All you got to do, uh, if you want to donate money and support the field hockey program at Brookline High, then uh, you send a payment to that Venmo account, but you put field hockey in the payment caption. That will, uh, you know, that will say that the payment is going towards the field hockey booster club. So be sure to check out all those, all that helpful information in the description section down below. Well, as we get ready for this game to get started, should get started in a few minutes, but as the teams continue to warm up, let's take a look at the rosters coming into today. And we'll start over here on our left with the hosting defending state champion Walpole Timberwolves in their white jerseys with dark blue jersey numbers. Uh, I got their roster from uh, MassLive.com, so ho hopefully it's, uh, it's accurate. And let's read through it right now. Going in order of jersey number for Walpole, first off we have a junior number two, Kate Schneider. Next, a senior number three, Sophia Frusi. A senior number four, Chrysia Swanson. A sophomore, number five, Riley Halloran. A senior, number six, Abby Poirier. A sophomore, number seven, Ella Dacey. A senior, number eight, Georgia Tashjian. A sophomore, number 10, Caroline Handwork. A junior, number 11, Caitlin Handwork. A senior, number 12, Jenna Wong. A senior, number 13, Caitlin Naughton. A sophomore, number 14, Audrey Farrell. A senior, number 16, Julie Koss. A junior, number 18, Ava Bianculli. A junior, number 19, Nadia Michienzi. And then we, uh, there were two players labeled as number 21, um, both juniors, Nora Cummings and Kendall Cusack. Um, so, see if uh, maybe there is a correction there that we can make at some point. Uh, we've got a junior number 26, Emily Hagen. A junior number 27, Grace Hagen. And a senior number 32, Idine Smith. Head coach of the Walpole High field hockey team is Jen Quinn. So that's the roster as I found it on MassLive.com. You know, there might be a couple of things that have been changed, might be a couple of things that were off on that website. I've already seen a couple of players whose jersey numbers were not listed. I've seen a number 23 and a number 31 that weren't listed. So, you know, we'll uh, do the best we can with the information we have. In the meantime, let's... Move over to our right where we can see the visiting Brookline High Warriors wearing dark blue jerseys with white jersey numbers. Let's go through the roster for the Warriors. Going in order of jersey number four, Brookline. First off, we have a senior, number one, Kale Bundy. Next, a junior, number two, Callie Feldman. A sophomore, number three, Ellie Haberkern. A junior, number five, Maya Schwartz. A freshman, number six, Audrina Williams. A senior captain, number seven, Mia DiCarlo. A senior, number eight, Birdie Hawkins. A senior, number nine, Kathy Merlis. A senior, number 10, Sadie Hoge. A senior, number 11, Bella Mendoza. A sophomore, number 12, Molly Schroeder. A senior, number 13, Ruthie Sandler. A junior, captain, number 14, Clara Tebow. A senior, number 15, Joanna Alves. A junior, number 16, Caroline Hughes. A senior, number 17, Izzy Pice. A senior, number 19, Maggie Tien. 
A junior, number 20, Zyra Johnson. A senior, number 21, Sydney Bueno. A senior, captain, number 22, Brooke Bottiglieri. A junior, number 24, Vanessa Cameron. A freshman goalie, number 84, Anna Subin. And a senior goalie, number 99, Anna Denker. Sophomore team manager, Sophia Miller-Culver. And the head coach of the Brookline High field hockey team is Emily Hunt. So those are the rosters coming in to today. And like I said, this on paper projects to be a tough match for Brookline. Last year, these two teams faced off on October 4, with the Timberwolves getting the win 7-0 over Brookline. Walpole went on to go 17-1 that regular season, earning the top spot in the MIAA Division I Power Rankings and then marched all the way to a state championship win, getting revenge against rival Andover, who they'd lost to in the 2021 and 22 state championships. So Walpole, as usual, has some big aspirations for this season. Brookline still building their way up coming off a season where they ranked 25th in Division I and lost in the round of 32. But like I said earlier, going up against a program as high up as Walpole, in my eyes, it's an opportunity for any program that wants to build their way up into a truly strong program because you get to see what a top flight program looks like. You know, what the players' skills are like, how they move the ball, things of that nature. It's the same kind of stuff I say when Brookline goes up against uh, some of the more newbie field hockey programs like Framingham and such that are still trying to get off the ground that they get to see what it's like for a program that's a little bit more in the swing of things and can regularly make the, the state tournament because, you know, there's different echelons of programs in any sport, but especially in a sport like field hockey that's, you know, less popular, less mainstream. It takes time for schools to build those programs up to the likes of a Walpole or an Andover, you know, and you see that even at higher levels, you can see the result of a sport being around and being popular for a longer time and giving multiple programs time to build up their foundations and get to a point where a bunch of them can be highly competitive. You know, for an example, you look at the competitive scene in women's college basketball. You know, back in, you know, Back even just uh, a decade or two ago, it was just all teams like UConn and uh, Tennessee. Um, you know, occasionally some other school like a Notre Dame or a Rutgers would be competitive, but for the most part, the top dogs pretty much ran the show. But you look at the competitive landscape now, and there's a whole bunch of teams in the mix, and any team could break out and become the team of that year in the same way that men's college basketball works because you get enough time and multiple programs will build up those foundations. And I expect that's going to happen with high school field hockey given enough time. And matchups like this can help be the stepping stones for, you know, programs that aren't as far along to see what they're aiming for. All right, that's enough philosophical ramblings from me for our pregame stage of this broadcast. The team's starting to take the field, and we will soon have this game underway.
Looks like we have dropped a few frames. That's a result of Wi-Fi connectivity. It can sometimes be a mixed bag. Um, right now, it hasn't dropped all that much, but uh, let me know in the live chat if any really big, uh, noteworthy plays get dropped as a result of Wi-Fi connectivity. I'm always recording these broadcasts at the same time that I live stream them, so anything that gets dropped during the live stream due to Wi-Fi is still captured on the recording, and I can upload the fully recorded version later tonight if need be. Brookline's going to get the opening possession here in the first quarter. Playing from our right, Walpole from our left. Just awaiting the opening whistle. And here we go. It is slid back to number 14, Clara Tebow. Pass up intercepted by Walpole. Pass a little wide on the near side. That'll be out of bounds, Brookline ball. Number 21, Sydney Bueno inserts. Gets it up to Ruthie Sandler, but Sandler bounces the ball off her own foot. That's a violation. Walpole gets the free ball. This is number 19, Nadia Michenzi. Passing it across and forward to number 21. Battling against a defensive double team. Violation is called against Brookline. Quickly they slide the pass across to number 26, Emily Hagen. Pass into the semicircle and bounces off a wall pull player. I think it went off an arm is what the official signaled. And so Brookline gets the free ball now. That flick didn't go quite the way she wanted. It's taken back. That pass blocked, though. Good defensive effort by, I think it was number 22, Brooke Bottiglieri. Into the semicircle again. It goes off the foot of a Brookline player, and we're going to have our first penalty corner. Timberwolves setting up for the first corner of the day. Slid back, stopped, dribbled across, big swing, blocked down, almost redirected, but a nice kick save by Anna Danker, and a violation on Walpole. That was a good offensive setup by the T-Wolves, but good reflexes by the Brookline netminder, Anna Danker. As that one is cleared out by number 12, Molly Schroeder, out far side, lost out of bounds, Walpole ball again. This one slid back to number 21, who sends it further back to Michenzi. Michenzi sends it out to Emily Hagen near side. Ball taken away by Sandler, but it's bounced off her foot. Smart play by Hagen, and now... Walpole moving with it. Pass goes through to number two, waving around defenders, trying to push it forward. It's a scrum in the box. Sent back. The shot is still blocked. And now another penalty corner for Walpole. Inserting it looks like it's going to be number three, Sophia Frusi. Slides this one back, and it's a high flick, but I think she might have been just outside the semicircle, and so they call the violation for going too high on the shot. This pass intercepted immediately. Emily Hagen again, dribbling in, shot. Oh, did that bounce off the post, or was that deflected by Danker? Not sure, but... Goes out of bounds. It's going to stay Walpole ball. Twenty one, pass it over to Hagen again. Hagen back to Michenzi. 
and across to Frucy. Frucy being pursued by Bertie Hawkins. Spins and passes for 21. Scrum for the ball and a violation on Brookline. Free ball for Walpole. They waste no time. Nichenzi slides it up. And it did bounce off of the foot of number six, Abby Poirier. And so that'll be a free ball for Brookline as they've been struggling to clear it out of their own end as it's blocked again by Emily Hagen. Dribbling in, backhander blocked by Tebow, but recovered. Another shot blocked out of the semicircle. They insert it again. Still scrumming for it. That shot does bounce in. That one scored. I'm trying to read the jersey number here. Just waiting for her to turn to the side there. That is number 10, Caroline Handwork with the game's first score. It is now 1-0, the Walpole lead, with just under 10 minutes still on the clock here in the first quarter. Slid back to Tebow, swings it out far side. Maggie T in a big swing forward, and it's taken away. But the pass intercepted right back by Izzy Pice. Pass up for Hawkins. Hawkins met by defense from number 21. A big swing out to the near side. Bounces past everybody. Rolls out of bounds. Brookline trying to apply some pressure. Sydney Bueno setting up to insert from out of bounds. Sends it up. It's taken by Pice. Poke check by 21, but Pice recovers. Sends it out far side for Hawkins. Hawkins. Trying to push it forward, walled off by number 27, Grace Hagen. Knocked out of bounds, and it will stay Brookline ball. Slid back, and almost intercepted by number two, Kate Schneider. Now lost out of bounds. And it'll be Brookline ball once again. This one lifted high, but blocked down by the Timberwolves. Dribbling with it, a pass near side to Emily Hagen. Hagen running upfield with it. Flicks it into the semicircle, just barely blocked at the last second by, I believe, Bottiglieri. Recovering it is Caitlin Naughton for a second, but now knocked loose by Pice. Recovered again by the T-Wolves. They try and push it upfield. Blocked again by Emily Hagen. Pass to the middle. Finds a target. Spinning around. Backhander bounced high and could not be brought back down. I think uh, Poirier was trying to knock that one down so she could get a proper shot off, but whistled for the violation. Brookline's clear. Walled off. Sent back into the semicircle. Battling for it was Schneider. Violation on Walpole again. 1-0 the lead for Walpole. Off a goal from number 10, Caroline Handwork. Brookline tries to slide it up. Blocked again. Slid back forward. Not and trying to dribble through. Gets blocked. Schneider, the backhander, blocked. Recovered. Not and tries to slide it through again. A scrum around the cage, and it's knocked out of bounds. Brookline ball looks like. And another attempted clear blocked once again. I believe that's handwork. Handwork slides it back, but intercepted. I believe that's Hawkins. Violation on Walpole. Brookline gets the free ball. Tebow slings it. Violation on Brookline, and Walpole takes it right back. Racing up with it, wasting no time. Into the semicircle. Big swing and a laser shot 
is scored by Caitlin Naughton. Wasting no time on that one. I uh, didn't quite see who it was that raced that ball upfield, but a nice assist up to Naughton, who just went for the big golf swing and launched it past the goalie for the second score of the day. 6.26 on the clock here in the first quarter. 2-0 the Walpole lead. Pass goes up. Hawkins trying to move it upfield again, but stolen away by number 21. Backhander slid upfield. Bounced away from number 5, Riley Halloran. Lost out of bounds. It'll be Brookline ball. Pass for Tebow. Tebow flicks it upfield. Battle for the ball, and Hawkins gets it off Halloran's foot for the violation. Brookline trying to move it fast. Intercepted again by Emily Hagen, who's gotten a bunch of takeaways early. As that one bounced off a foot, but it's recovered by Walpole, so play continues. Now knocked loose. I believe that's Audrina Williams. Whiffed on the pass there. Now tries a pass, blocked by 21. Violation, Brookline ball. Bueno comes up. Pushes it forward, intercepted by number 14, Audrey Farrell. Taken back by Williams, but nowhere to go. Stolen again. Pass goes up to Schneider. Schneider slides it up for Caroline Handwerk. Handwerk trying to weave around the defense. Draws the violation as that goes off the leg of Schroeder. Quick pass from Emily Hagen, broken up by Tebow. Violation on Walpole. Schroeder looking around, sends it near side, intercepted again, Emily Hagen. Hagen dribbling in, pushes it forward, ricochets, and couldn't get the backhander. I think that was Handwork, who was in the vicinity of the ball there, but just couldn't get her stick on that one the way she wanted. Four minutes and 20 seconds left here in the first. Walpole leads by two as that one rolls out of bounds. Walpole sliding it back to reset. Dangerous pass, but swooping in and taking it away now is Bertie Hawkins, but intercepted right back by 21. Taken back off the double team, uh, Caroline Hughes draws the violation. Brookline gets the free ball. Tebow. Sends it across midfield. Taken back, that one blocked successfully. Hughes takes it, stolen away again by 21. Bouncing along now, stopped by Bueno. Bueno fighting for it, trying to fight through multiple Timberwolves. Intercepted again by Emily Hagen. But stolen back by Williams. Battle for the ball, and it's won by number seven, Ella Dacey. Dacey slides it up the line. Bueno trying to take it and clear it out, but surrounded, taken away by Schneider. Schneider into the semicircle. Slides pass back and violation Walpole. Pass. Stolen back. By number 14, Farrell. Near side. Lost out of bounds. Brookline ball. Number 11, Bella Mendoza. Is controlling it there, but knocked out by the wall pole defense. Bueno sends it up the line. Corralled by 21. Knocked back by Williams. And taken back, working it. Up the near side is Frucy lost out of bounds, Brookline ball. Pass to the middle, finds Naughton. Naughton, pass up, Schneider. Schneider back to Naughton, flicks it, saved by Danker. Nice kick save, just missed. 
a uh, crashing Farrell, I want to say, who would have had a great chance for a putback, but the rebound bounced just wide of her stick. Stolen back now by Dacey. Dacey slides it up, blocked. Bueno. Pass out to Williams. Williams turning around, stolen by Dacey. Dacey flicks it into the semicircle, could not be redirected by handwork. And a violation on Walpole. And it'll be Brookline Ball. Schroeder intercepted, slid back in. Farrell looking for a chance. Lost control of the ball out the back end. Schroeder's pass didn't get enough of it. Stolen by Farrell. Farrell sends it to the middle looking for Schneider, but... It's a violation on Brookline. That's going to be another penalty corner. Walpole's had two corners so far here in the first quarter. 40 seconds and counting. It's a running clock in field hockey, so they've got to get set fast if they want a chance to score here. Number 21 setting up to insert. Sides back, controlled. Passed from Hagen, shot lifted, blocked, and a violation on Walpole again for going for the high shot. Brookline controls it, and this might just run out the clock for the first quarter. And it will. Three seconds, and that ends the first quarter. Our score at the end of one, the Walpole Timberwolves two, the Brookline Warriors zero. Goals for Walpole scored by Caroline Handwork and Caitlin Naughton. And as we go into the break, I remind you this broadcast is brought to you in part by Esh Dental, located right in Coolidge Corner. You can see their logo right there in the bottom center of your screen. Book your next dental appointment with local dentist and BHS sports parent, Dr. Brandon Esch, for the non-corporate personalized dentistry our community deserves. Call 617-566-0103 or go online to eschdental.com to find out more and book your appointment. Once again, 617-566-0103 or go online to eashdental.com. And all that information in the description section down below. So the game largely going as expected so far. Walpole pretty firmly in control. You know, Brookline so far not letting it get completely out of hand. But if they want a better performance than they had against the T-Wolves last year, they're going to need to clamp down harder on defense because if Walpole scores at the same rate every quarter, then they're on pace for eight goals this game. Remember, they scored seven against Brookline last year. Brookline got a couple of pushes across midfield in the first quarter, but weren't able to get very far. Let's see what they're able to do here in the second quarter. 
as Brookline gets the opening possession again. Pass is slid back to Williams. Williams pass broken up. Emily Hagen has been all over the transition defense for the Timberwolves as that pass to the middle is intercepted by Naughton. Naughton slides one over near side to Hagen. Hagen dribbling in towards the semicircle, sends in a pass, blocked, recovered, slid back. Naughton lifts it high and it's blocked down. Attempted clear, blocked again by Naughton. Slides it back, 21. 21 lifts it way high. And another violation on Walpole as it just can't seem to go for those high alley-oop plays without committing a violation. Schroeder looking around pass to the outside intercepted pass in Schneider passes back out sent towards the middle for Naughton and a violation on Walpole Brookline ball Schroeder's pass Controlled by Brookline, but that pass intercepted, sent to the middle to Naughton. Now blocked by Tebow, but Naughton staying with it. Naughton dribbling in. And another violation on Walpole. Brookline takes it back. But again, it's taken right back by Emily Hagen. Pass to the outside to Poirier. And... Violation on Brookline. Free ball for Walpole. Emily Hagen dribbling in. Backhander slid up. Scrum inside the semicircle. The attempt to clear blocked by Hagen again. And it's a violation inside the semicircle. It'll be another penalty corner for Walpole. Timberwolves had three penalty corners in the first quarter. Did not score on any of them as they send number 21 to insert. Number 21 is either Nora Cummings or Kendall Cusack. It is Kendall Cusack, just been confirmed for me by a very helpful fan. Thank you. That one slides wide and out the back end. So Brookline survives... Another corner attempt by the defending champs, but another clear intercepted handwork, sliding one across, Schneider trying to redirect it. Oh, it slid right in front of the cage and could not be knocked in by the Timberwolves. Couple different players had a chance there as it slid right in front of the goal line, but could not be knocked across. Schneider passes back to Cusack, and it's pushed forward. Schneider tries a swing, blocked. And they call a violation as I think that went off the foot of the Brookline defender, Sadie Hoge. Another penalty corner for Walpole. This will be their fifth of the game, their second of this second quarter. Cusack inserts. Passed back down to Cusack, trying to work along that back line, and they draw another violation. It'll be a, another penalty corner. They tried for something a little different that time and just weren't able to work around the backdoor defender. This time slid back. Naughton sends it way high. Comes down, a pass back, blocked, I believe, by Schroeder. Poirier sending a pass back. Golf swing, bounces wide. That was Naughton trying to get a similar score to her first goal. But not that time. Pass intercepted, Naughton. And it was knocked loose, but not cleanly. It'll be a free ball for Walpole. And 
And pass from Cusack deflected. Naughton tries to move it along. And it bounces off Naughton's body. That'll be a free ball for Brookline. Less than 10 minutes to go here in the second quarter. 2-0, still the Walpole lead. Pass across to Michenzi. Stolen away by Brookline. Slid up field, blocked by Emily Hagen. But a violation on Hagen, and it'll be a free ball for the Warriors. Bueno, pass, near side, Sandler. Back to Bueno. Bueno lifts it. And violation on Bueno for lifting it too high as it went off the body of Poirier. Now Handwork pass it out far side. That pass blocked, but Handwork has to push it further forward. Bueno tries to clear. Stolen back, and Bueno blocks another shot. And Brookline managed to clear it out and draw the violation. Schroeder pass, far side, up the line. I think that's Hawkins. Flicks it across midfield. Sent back up the line by the Timberwolves. Brookline's got some numbers on the far side there as they fight for it, but a violation called on Brookline, and Walpole takes over once again. Sent back. Big swing from Frusi, intercepted by Tebow. Tebow battling, but surrounded. Somehow keeps control, but her pass was intercepted, but they call the violation on Walpole. Tebow with a big swing, blocked down by Grace Hagen. Pass up, Naughton blocked, but Naughton still fighting for the ball. And a violation called on Brookline. Must have gone off of Tebow's foot there. Pass intercepted Sandler. Violation on Walpole. Free ball for Brookline. Seven and a half to go before halftime. No score in the second quarter as of yet. Schroeder's pass intercepted. Taken back the other way. Big swing from Naughton was blocked but off a foot, and because it was touched inside the semicircle off the delayed infraction, that's going to result in another penalty corner for the T-Wolves. Cusack setting up to insert once again. Slid back, Naughton passes outside, and the defense comes, but it's stolen back. She lost her footing, a big swing is blocked possibly by Denker. Backhander is in. Out of the fray, it is recovered and backhanded in for Walpole's third score. Didn't quite see who it was, but I think it might have been Naughton again. Yes, that's Caitlin Naughton with her second goal of the day. The Walpole senior with two scores as Walpole now leads 3-0. Tebow a big swing blocked and controlled by Brookline. They go up the middle and it's knocked away by Cusack. Up the far sideline, a pass towards the middle, blocked by, I believe, Schroeder. Dribbling up with it, pass up, broken up, taken back by the Timberwolves. Now blocked, recovered by Brookline. Stolen back by Michenzi. And now passed near side for, po <coughs> Excuse me, for Poirier. Violation on Brookline. Pass to the outside, Emily Hagen. 
Trying to spin off her defender, draws a violation call on Sandler outside the semicircle, so not a penalty corner. Dribbling around, knocked loose by, <coughs> by Sandler. Hagen takes back, dribbles into the attack area, but her pass blocked by, I believe, Schroeder. Attempted clear, blocked by Michenzi. Pass to the middle. And we got a delayed infraction on Brookline. Walpole still trying to attack, and now they blow the whistle, and it's going to be another penalty corner. Cusack in the corner to insert. Taken by Naughton. Naughton, big swing, kick save, Denker. And that's going to draw another corner. Cusack slides it back. Naughton slides it over. Hagen inside. Great passing. Somehow stopped by Danker. And Brookline draws the violation. Great ball tracking by Anna Danker to stop that shot. As some really good ball movement by the Timberwolves. Had them right at point blank range in front of the cage for a potential score. That pass slides through. And another violation on Walpole. Three and a half to go here in the second quarter. Walpole leads Brookline 3 0. Bueno stolen away. Poirier slides to the middle. Naughton tries to bring it into the attack area, blocked by Schroeder. Couldn't be cleared out. Poirier slides across her, and it's blocked. But not cleanly blocked by Brookline. That's another violation penalty corner. Cusack kind of whiffs on the insert. And they call her on a violation for that. And so Brookline will get to clear this one out. Schroeder sends it out far side. Slid to the middle and couldn't be collected. Brookline takes it away. Attempted pass forward. Intercepted by Hagen. Williams couldn't get enough on that pass. Emily Hagen dribbling up, flicks one wide of the box. Bueno sends it upfield, intercepted again. This time by Halloran. Taken back by Brookline, passed up. Uh, that is Kale Bundy battling with Cusack. Call the violation on Cusack. Minute and a half to go before halftime. Schroeder passing it up for Tebow. Immediately stolen again by the Timberwolves. Pass from Naughton up to Schneider. Blocked. Bueno couldn't control it enough. To, or now it's Bueno trying to clear it. My mistake earlier. Schneider backhand pass, scrum of players, attempted clear, Naughton turns around, flicks it high, handwork, controls it down, tries a shot, blocked, but not cleanly. It'll be another corner with less than a minute to play here in the second quarter.
Cusack slides it out wide. Big golf swing saved by Danker again, but the rebound recovered, and that shot is in, and Caitlin Naughton has the hat trick. Three goals for the Walpole senior. And with 29 seconds on the clock, Walpole leads by four. And whistle blown there. Tebow, a big swing up field. And it's just gonna roll all the way down. This will probably bring us to halftime. That clear rolls out of bounds and that will be the last play of the half. At halftime, our score, the Walpole High Timberwolves four, the Brookline High Warriors zero. For Walpole, they're led by three goals from Caitlin Naughton and one from Caroline Handwork. And as we head into the halftime break, I remind you this broadcast is brought to you in part by Esh Dental, located right in Coolidge Corner. Book your next dental appointment with local dentist and BHS sports parent, Dr. Brandon Esh, for the non-corporate personalized dentistry our community deserves. Call 617-566-0103 or go online to eshdental.com to find out more and book your appointment. Once again, 617-566-0103 or go online to eashdental.com. All that information in the description section down below, as are some other helpful links. A link uh, to the official Venmo account for the Friends of BHS Field Hockey Booster Club. If you follow that link uh, and you send a payment and include field hockey in the payment caption, you can donate to help support the Brookline High Field Hockey Program. And then lastly, we got a link and phone number for our local charity spotlight, the Brookline Community Foundation. For over 100 years, the Brookline Community Foundation has been a trusted partner supporting Brookline by investing in organizations and initiatives that help create opportunity and promote equity for everyone who lives, learns, works, and plays in our community. Among the foundation's many uh, grant programs is the BCF Scholarship Fund for Brookline High School, which provides graduating BHS students with scholarships to help fund post-secondary education. Through the first 10 years of the foundation scholarship fund they have raised about one and a half million dollars to be awarded to graduating Brookline High students and your help is crucial to supporting these Brookline youth as they embark on the next steps in their educational journeys visit brooklinecommunity.org or call 617-566-4442 to learn more about the BCF scholarship fund for Brookline High School and how you can make a difference right here in Brookline once again, brooklinecommunity.org or call 617-566-4442. All that information in the description section down below. At half, our score, wall pull four, Brookline zero. I'm going to take a break and uh, take off my headset for a minute. But I'll be back very soon because we only got two minutes left on the halftime clock. So uh, you better stay tuned.
Okay, back on the mic. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan coming to you live from Walpole High School in Walpole, Massachusetts. Here to bring you the second half of this high school varsity field hockey contest between the visiting Brookline High Warriors and the hosting Walpole High Timberwolves. The defending champs holding a 4-0 lead at home as we get ready to start the third quarter. Two teams switching sides. Brookline now on the left, Walpole on the right. The Timberwolves led by three goals from senior Kay uh, Caitlin Naughton and one goal from sophomore Caroline Handwerk. Walpole gets the first possession, kind of whiffs on that at first, but now the pass goes back to Kendall Cusack. Out far side, trying to push it up fields. Violation on Brookline. Free ball for Walpole. Pass goes to the middle. Backhand flick by Cusack. Bounces up, and it's taken by Naughton. Naughton spins. Trying to force her way through, and a violation on Brookline draws a penalty corner. Now Walpole, I think it's fair to say, got a couple of their scores on some putback attempts that started from penalty corner plays, but never scored on the initial swing of any of their uh, penalty corners in the first half. Cusack inserts. And it slides past Naughton. And it's broken up. Naughton chase it down. Golf swing sends it down, but out the back line, it'll be Brookline ball. Sydney Bueno slides it up, finds Clara Tebow, who sends it across to Bertie Hawkins. Hawkins pass is blocked. Pass to the middle to Cusack. Cusack sends it far side. And a pa attempted pass to the middle from Emily Hagen was blocked. Recovered now by Abby Poirier. Pass inside Kate Schneider. Trying to move through a couple defenders. And again, it goes off a defender's foot. That'll be another penalty corner for Walpole. Cusack slides it out to Frusi down to Cusack. Cusack tried one from the baseline, and it's kicked away by Denker, and then lost out of bounds, Brookline ball. Anna Denker has had a few nice kick saves today, but she's been facing an onslaught from one of the best field hockey teams in the state. Pass to the middle to Naughton. Naughton, big swing, slides all the way down, kicked away by Denker. And a backhander into the semicircle, tries a shot blocked by, I think, Bottigliere. And that was Brooke Bottigliere on the block that time. Bueno slides it up to Tebow. Tebow works it out far side to Sandler. Sandler's pass intercepted, but now intercepted right back by Brookline. Izzy Pice controlling it. Turns around, sends it across to Hawkins. Hawkins flicks it forward. Intercepted, sent back up. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now number 23 sends it. Up the near side to number eight, Georgia Tashian. Lost out the back end, Brookline ball. Or is it Walpole ball? It's uh, Timberwolves ball. Cusack.
passes forward to Naughton. Naughton pass across, blocked by Bueno. Tried to clear it. Nothing doing. A shot blocked by Bottiglieri. Cleared out now by Thibault. But intercepted. Taken back by Grace Hagen. Pass to the middle. Cusack. Trying to battle through, but stood up by the Brookline defense. But not cleanly. It'll be a free ball for the T-Wolves. Grace Hagen slides back to Cusack. Cusack fakes. Backhand flick. Goes into the semicircle, but cleared out by Hawkins. Now working it up is Bella Mendoza. Pass up field intercepted by Grace Hagen. Slides it back to Sophia Frusi. Slides it across to Nadia uh, Michenzi. Now down the far side, pass to the middle. Dribbling with it now is Naughton. And some physical play, and they call it on Naughton. Free ball for Brookline. And they attempted clear there, intercepted by Schneider, but taken back by Schroeder. Her pass taken away, though. Emily Hagen, backhand pass up to Schneider. Schneider pushing it forward, stopped by Bueno. <coughs> Pardon me. Couple passes now, and a violation on Brookline. It'll be another penalty corner. Just under nine minutes on the clock here in the third quarter. Walpole up for nothing. And we've been briefly disconnected. Hopefully that comes back soon as this one slid back. 23, a big swing. Downed by Cusack. Cusack turns around and scores. Kendall Cusack with her first goal as we've got, ah, oh geez, we disconnected from the internet completely there. That's unpleasant. There we go. Okay, now we're reconnected. My apologies uh, to the live audience there. I'm not sure what happened. Internet cut out temporarily. And... In the midst of that disconnect, uh, unfortunately, we did miss a goal. Number 21, Kendall Cusack, scored that one. Now Brookline on a bit of a rush into the semicircle. They're trying to make things happen. And Brookline gets their first penalty corner of the day. So looks like I got us reconnected just in time for some excitement for the Brookline offense. Seven minutes on the clock here in the third. Brookline with their first penalty corner attempt. Slid back, trying to control it. Pass forward, a chance, it's blocked. Audrina Williams trying to make something happen there, but it's lost out of bounds. It stays Brookline ball. Kale Bundy setting up to insert. Looking around. Lifts it, bouncing along. Fighting for it. Izzy Pice trying to dribble through, but it's stolen away by Caroline Handwork. 
The attempted clear at Brookline, bringing the house to try and push it forward. And that one came in high. And so that's a violation on Brookline. And it'll be a free ball for Walpole. Cusack, big swing blocked. And a violation on Cusack for the big swing. And now Brookline continuing to try and press. This is the best offensive sequence they've had so far today. They send a pass way back to Bottiglieri, who slides it up. Intercepted. And now sent towards midfield, blocked by Bundy. They call the violation on Bundy for hitting the body of number 23. And now Walpole moving the ball. Cusack. Swings it, stopped. Now it's taken by Cusack again, dribbling up. Shot stopped by Denker, put back is in. That's another goal. I, I'm trying to see the number, it looks like it might have been Caroline Handwork with her second goal, but I'm going to wait and see. No, my mistake. That's number 16, Julie Koss. Kose, excuse me. Julie Kose with her first goal of the game, and Walpole now leads 6 to nothing. Kose, the fourth different goal scorer for Walpole so far. Three goals from Caitlin Naughton and one each from Caroline Handwork, Julie Kose, and Kendall Cusack. Now an attempted push into the semicircle, blocked by Bueno. Clears it out, blocked back by Walpole. Dribbling up, that pass blocked. Still scrumming for it, and it's a violation against Walpole. Pass to the far side. Up the line, out of bounds. Now this pass goes to Tebow, sliding it towards the middle a bit dangerous. Schroeder sends it near side to Bundy. Bundy's pass up the line for Maggie Tien. Tien dribbling up with it, sends it forward, intercepted. Brookline still battling to get control of it. Hawkins gets it, slides it up to Izzy Pice. Pice trying to weave around the defender, but it's stolen away. Good defense by Ella Dacey. And Dacey now running up with it, dribbling around, still controlling it. Try to golf swing there, um, uh, might have gotten a piece of Tebow there and is called for the violation. Tebow whiffs on a big swing there and has to regain control. And now it's taken away by Walpole, but a violation and it'll be a free ball for Brookline. They quickly slide it up, but miss. Taken back by number 18, Ava Bianculli. Pass back to Dacey. Dacey's pass over to Bianculli. And Hawkins applying some pressure there, but Bianculli gets the pass away to Naughton. Now the attempted clear, Naughton pushes back into the attack area. Attempted clear is blocked, passed forward. And now it's going to be a penalty corner for Walpole. Less than two minutes on the clock here in the third quarter. Walpole firmly in control with a 6-0 lead. Insert goes back. Dacey, I think, slides that one stopped right at the goal line. It's a scrum. Now that attempted putback is blocked. 
Recovered again, trying to push it through. I think it got kicked out there by Denker, but it's still recovered. Not and tries another shot. Blocked again out of the air by Denker. Brookline still trying to clear it, and finally they get a violation called on Walpole. And they'll be taking this one out. Less than a minute to go here in the third. Attempted clear, blocked by Naughton. Naughton pass into the attack area, stopped by Bueno. Cleared out. Williams sends it up the line. Racing it up field now is number three, Ellie Haberkern. And now a violation. Wall pull ball. They're just off and running with it. Backhand swing, chops it high. It's re uh, recovered by 23. Insert into the attack area is cleared out by Bueno. And that's going to be the last seconds off the clock. And that ends the third quarter. Our score at the end of three, Walpole six, Brookline zero. During this break between quarters, I remind you this broadcast is brought to you in part by Esh Dental, located right in Coolidge Corner. Book your next dental appointment with local dentist and BHS sports parent, Dr. Brandon Esh, for the non-corporate personalized dentistry our community deserves. Call 617-566-0103 or go online to eshdental.com to find out more and book your appointment. Once again, 617-566-0103, or go online to eashdental.com. And you can find that in the description section down below. Two more goals put on the board for Walpole, they've been nothing if not consistent. Two goals in each of the first three quarters as we head into the fourth and final frame of this contest. If Walpole scores just once more, they will match the total score they had against Brookline last year in what was a 7 nothing victory. Brookline got a brief push upfield offensively in that third quarter. You could at least say it was their best offensive quarter as they generated their first and so far only penalty corner chance. Here we go, a fresh 15 on the clock for the fourth and final quarter of this ball game. That one being moved on the near side, stolen away by Maggie Tian, pushed up for Bertie Hawkins but couldn't stay with it, and a violation called on Brookline. Taking their time, pass near side, 
to Beyond Cooley. Now stolen away, Izzy Pice off and running with it. Blocked by Ella Dacey. And it goes off Pice's foot. Now Dacey dribbling with it. Backhander up the line. Gets up to number four, Garcia Swanson. Stolen back by Sydney Bueno. Pass gets up to Hawkins. Hawkins couldn't get past number five, Riley Halloran. Halloran dribbling. Pass up. Blocked by, I believe, Kale Bundy. Moved up the far side. Lost out of bounds. one slid up, intercepted by Walpole. Pass forward is recovered by number 23. Pass into the attack area, blocked by Bundy. And they call a violation on Walpole. Free ball for Brookline. Bueno finds Tebow cutting across the middle. Pass outside. Pushed up by Audrina Williams. Couple quick passes, but that one wide. And it's taken back by the Timberwolves, but stolen back now by Tian. Tian racing upfield. Blocked on the pass attempt by Dacey who's been such a wall anytime Brookline tries to force things as she draws a violation there. Two violations. Now off and running with it. Flicks it upfield. Another pass blocked by Bueno. Slid up to Tian. Tian big swing. Gets it up to Hawkins. Hawkins couldn't get it past beyond Cooley and it's taken by Dacey. But Hawkins... Almost took it back, but called for the violation. Pass outside. Racing up with it, I think, is number 11, intercepted. Or no, a violation on Walpole. Pass goes back. Caroline Handwork applying pressure on Sadie Hoge. Now Brookline trying to send it upfield, and they briefly do, but couldn't get enough on that pass. Stolen back, and now once again, Walpole off and running with it. Pass up to 23. Shot blocked by Hoge there. Now intercepted by number 11, Caitlin Handwork. Now Brookline passed it up. Stolen away once again by the defensive line for Walpole, led by Ella Dacey, who now dribbles with it. Flicks one into the attack area. Stopped by Brook Bottigliere, who clears it to the outside. And that's going to slide out of bounds, Walpole ball. Off the deflection. It's a scrum around the edge of the attack area. And back in. And a pass back is controlled by Caitlin Handwork. Trying to fight her way through. It's taken away by Williams. Passed ahead. Gets up to Haberkern. Haberkern ran out of room there, but still fighting for it. Goes back. 
passed up field, stopped by Bundy, slides it out. Ruthie Sandler cutting towards the middle, pass intercepted, but Sandler takes it back from Halloran, and Tebow takes it now, whiffs on the big pass there, and it's taken back by Halloran. Hawkins now takes it away, pass blocked. Hawkins keeps pushing it upfield, stopped, passed up for Bion Cooley, off the foot of Sandler, Walpole ball. Bion Cooley sends it off, Hawkins violation on Walpole. And Brookline trying to get set in place so that they can get something going here. Big swing from Bundy is stopped. Now dribbling around with it is 23. Slides it upfield to number four, Swanson. Stopped by Bueno. Sw <coughs> Swanson takes it back, excuse me. Pass across the middle for Caroline Handwork. Stopped by Williams, cleared out. Williams still fighting for it. Sent up field, blocked briefly by Hode. Recovered now, Naughton, big swing, knocked down. They're battling in the attack area now, and violation Brookline, penalty corner for Walpole. Insert, back to Dacey, flicks it, deflected, 23, shot blocked. Last line of defense for Brookline was number 15, Joanna Alves. Now because it went out off Brookline, that means Walpole will get the free ball. Halloran. Sends it back to Dacey. Dacey survives the forward pressure by Tebow. Still dribbling with it, weaving her way around. Pushes it into the semicircle. Fighting for it. Walpole still in control. Pass goes back to Bion Cooley. This pass. Controlled by Dacey, couldn't be broken up by Mendoza. Sends it up, and controlled now by 23. This pass stopped. Sent back beyond Cooley. Beyond Cooley, dribbling around. Stopped, recovers, tries another shot, stopped again. Now Naughton pushes it up field and it's lost out of bounds. Gonna stay Walpole ball here. Five and a half to go here in the fourth. Still six nothing Walpole. Pass over to 23, 23 dribbling along, tries a backhander well wide. And now it's gonna be Brookline ball. Blocked and stolen by 23. Sends in a crosser, blocked by the Brookline defense, but it's right in front of the box. Cleared out. Hawkins slides it upfield. And violation on Walpole. Or maybe, yeah, I think it was a violation. Hawkins, a big bouncing swing. Stopped. 
by Dacey, stolen now by Hawkins. Three on one rush, but the sliding pass is taken there by Caitlin Handwork, the last line of defense for the Timberwolves. That pass was just a little more to the left. Brookline might have had something there. Stolen away again, but taken right back by the T-Wolves. On the offensive push, it misses and rolls out the back end. Pass looped over to Hoge. Try to send it up, blocked again. Now in the attack area. Sent outside and couldn't work it up the line. Blocked again by Walpole. Tebo recovers, trying to weave through. And finally taken away by Naughton. Flick forward, blocked by Alves. Still fighting for it. And we got a whistle. Penalty corner for Walpole. Two forty five on the clock here in the fourth and final quarter of this contest. Insert goes back, pass down to the baseline, cross 23, shot blocked. And it goes out of bounds, Brookline ball. Again, Walpole with some impressive passing on that corner, but Brookline able to make the block. That high lift blocked down by 23 and kind of hooked that one as that, uh, that one definitely went higher than she was intending it to. And that'll be a violation, Brookline ball. This one blocked by Caroline Handwork. Slides it through, stopped by Hoge, but bounces off of her body, and so it'll be another penalty corner. Minute and a half to play. As Walpole well on their way to another victory to keep their undefeated season alive. Unsurprisingly, Brookline will fall below 500 to a record of 2-3. and three. This one slid back to Dacey. Dacey tries to send one down to the baseline. Halloran tries to force one in. 23 trying to kick one in. And again, Walpole couldn't get a stick on it cleanly. And the violation gives Brookline the free ball. Bueno whiffed on the swing there. Somehow manages to push it out, but it's taken back by Halloran. Flex back and forth, and now Brookline takes it. Trying to move it upfield is number two, Callie Feldman. Battle for the ball around midfield, and it's won by Naughton. Walpole again moving the ball up. Stopped by Bundy. Pass up to Williams. Less than 20 seconds left. Brookline still trying to get one last push in the closing seconds. That pass blocked by Dacey. And that is going to end the ball game. The final score, the Walpole Timberwolves 6, the Brookline Warriors 0. So at the end of the day, the Warriors do manage to produce a result one goal better than what they had last year against Walpole, allowing one fewer goal today. And again, it's it's all about it's all about progress. It's all about making that climb. 
up to the higher echelons of the field hockey hierarchy. You know, right now Walpole's at the top of the mountain. Brookline's not there yet, but you take the progress where you can get it. For Walpole, a simple, straightforward win keeps them undefeated for the season so far. Leading the way for the Timberwolves, Caitlin Naughton with three goals. And then one goal each from Caroline Handwerk, uh, Julie, uh, Julie Kose, and Kendall Cusack. And that's going to do it for this live stream. We got uh, one note in the live chat to close us out from Michelle Mendoza. Thanks, Jesse. My pleasure. Always happy to provide this coverage. But that's going to do it here. Remember, if you enjoyed this live stream, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my upcoming live streams. I think this might actually be my last, uh, currently my last uh, field hockey game on the docket for this regular season. Um, but uh, if any uh, parents are interested in trying to book me for additional games, uh, you can reach out to me through my personal website, jessesports.com, or through my email, both of which you can see on the bottom right corner of your screen or at the very bottom of the description section of this video. Also in the description section of this video, uh, you can see some helpful links, a link to our local sponsor, Ash Dental, located right in Coolidge Corner. You can book your next dental appointment with local dentist and BHS sports parent, Dr. Brandon Esch, for the non-corporate personalized dentistry our community deserves. Call 617-566-0103 or go online to eschdental.com. You can also see the link to the official Venmo account of the Friends of BHS Field Hockey Booster Club. If you would like to send money to support the field hockey program, you can follow that link to the Venmo account uh, as long as you uh, include field hockey in your payment caption, then they'll know that's what that payment is for. And uh, you can also find a link and phone number for our local charity spotlight, the Brookline Community Foundation. One last note in the live chat from Jenny Williams. Another very simple thank you, Jesse. My pleasure. Thank you all for the kind words. But uh, that is going to do it for this one. Final score, Walpole 6, Brookline 0 from Walpole High School in Walpole, Massachusetts. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night.